Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm here to do the self-aware readers tag. It's been a while since I've gotten to do a tag video, and these are a lot of fun. I have a backlog of tag videos that I've seen on other channels that have looked like fun, and so I'm this is one of the ones that I had saved a while back. I first saw this tag on Casey's channel over at Lost in the Bookcase. But if I remember right, the original video is by Courtney Ferreter. And both videos will be linked in the description down below. So on to the questions. Question number one. What most draws you into a novel or story and makes you want to keep reading? Some examples are plot, characters, writing style, atmosphere, or something else. And for me, I am a character reader. I don't necessarily need to have a strong plot as long as what the characters are doing makes eternal logical sense, according to my read of it. And so the characters are what will draw me and keep me into your story. The characters are the ones that are going to make me want to pick it up, even though I've had a long day and I really should be going to sleep. It's the characters. Question number two. What is a convention or trope that will immediately turn you off in your reading experience with a novel or story? And I am going to link my most recent... Tr uh, <clears throat> And I'm going to link my most recent trope video on here. Um, but it's multiple point of view characters. That is a big re that is a very common reason of why I will DNF a book. If you have too many characters wh whose points of views are like they're not there's no like common ground in sight, you're probably have lost me. Because it takes me a while to connect to a character. I just don't like reading a character. And I'm not saying that the character has to be likable. I just have to be able to get inside their head. If I can't do that, then I'm not interested. And then if you have too many different character point of views, again, you will have lost me. But some other reasons why I might DNF a book is low intrigue. I don't feel like anything is going and poor character development. If all your characters sound like Monomouth, I'm going to be like, and I am done. Question number three. What most appeals to you when reading nonfiction and makes you want to keep reading? So nonfiction is very different. I am willing to read nonfiction that's more academic sounding, but I also like reading memoirs and autobiographies. Those are actually my favorite types of nonfiction. And then also reading nonfiction that has more of a personable voice, kind of like Joanna Penn or Gail Carriger. They have very more personable voices with the information that they're giving. I, I'll, I'll do all three because really it's the subject matter that has me most interested. Question number four. What is a convention or trope in nonfiction that will turn you off in your reading experience? That's a very good question. Um, trying. I don't typically DNF nonfiction. I am slower when it comes to reading nonfiction, so that will take me months. But I tend to finish the book eventually. Um, the one like the one exception that's really focused in my head is the right stuff. I enjoyed the movie, but the book had a very strong bias. And the repetition of it got to be too much for me. And that's where I was like, eh, eh. And I love reading about astronauts and the history surrounding astronauts. So that, I guess if you're very much like, let me hit you over the head with the information and too much repetition, that could be a thing. But otherwise, yeah, that's an interesting question. I'd like to actually, anybody who watches this, answer that one down below. I'm, I'm curious to know what, 
if you read nonfiction, what your answer would be. Question number five. Would you say you read more for pleasure and enjoyment or more to learn and exercise your brain? And I would say I read more for pleasure and enjoyment. However, I'm not an escapist reader. So if things are going on in my life that is taking brain power, I won't read as much. I use my reading to inform things about the world. And I I get a lot of like connections through fiction. It doesn't just have to be nonfiction that helps inform the world. So basically anything I'm reading, I'm going to be learning from, but I primarily read to enjoy. It's my way of relaxing. Number six, which types of books are you likely to rate more highly and enjoy more overall? Example, brain candy, pleasure enjoyment books, or brain protein learning and exercise books. Well, again, that that's a little bit harder because I read nonfiction slower just because of how I process things. And I read fiction faster. So I mean, you could say that maybe... I mean, so I guess the argument can be said that I like fiction and that is what I, because that's what I consume more of, but I do enjoy the nonfiction that I read. Question number seven, do you have a sense early on of whether or not the book you're reading will be a five-star read or a book you will really like? And has a book ever surprised you in this regard? Yes, I do normally have a sense of whether or not a a book will be a five-star read. My rating system before joining BookTube was more closely to the Goodreads rating system, but I did five if I knew I wanted to own it and reread it, four if I really, really liked it and I was going, if it was a series, I would definitely continue. If it, if it was a standalone, I'd recommend it to people. Three, it was okay. I finished it. Um, very few books really got twos and ones from me because I have learned that I don't have time to waste. I will just DNF. So you're not going to see a lot of twos and ones unless I'm finishing it for a reading project or for a book club kind of thing. But I I do get a sense pretty soon of whether the book is going to be one that I will want to reread versus I'm just going to really enjoy it. I was going to say or versus okay, but not really. Um, but also with fiction, I have probably, many people find an annoying habit. I'll read the first three or four chapters, and if I'm really enjoying it, I go and I read the last few pages of the book to see if I want to finish the journey to that point. Because I've had enough books where they didn't stick the landing, and there's nothing worse than getting to the end of the book and just feeling cheated. Like you spend all your time reading this and the book just went, whoo. And I have had a few books surprise me. Um, more also when I changed my rating style. Last year, I adopted G over Book Roast's Copile system. And I had some books actually come out as a five star that in my old system would have been a four star because I had no interest in rereading. But thinking more objectively on the characters and the development of the read of the everything, it ended up coming out a five star and that did surprise me. Question number eight, considering books that you've rated five stars in the past, or if you don't rate them, then books you really loved, do you think you would feel the same way about them now? Why or why not? Because my old system was five stars meant I wanted to reread the book. I think overall, or at least from the books I have, I've kept track of on Goodreads because I've been, I, I was, I've been using Goodreads for many years now. I, so I'm able to go back and look and see the books I've read and how I've rated them. The majority of those still stand as books that I want to reread. And so I would say, yes, they probably do still stand as a five-star read. I mean, if not, they'd be a four-star, but it would be a very high four-star, almost to the five-star. So more what I find is in the system that I'm using now, more books will get a five-star that I, in the past, would have given a four star to. And actually, I know that I've seen Sam over at 
uh, Thoughts on Tomes, do review videos of books that she had given five stars for past years and how she feels about them now. I think that would be a fun series to do as well, just to be like, tastes change. People change. That is a constant. Change, change is a constant in life. So I think that would be interesting to go further in, and perhaps that's an idea for next year. These questions are also going to be down in the description down below. What are your answers? If you like this video, please like it and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye.